Okay, so in this lesson we're going to be building a couple of different overrides and they're all going to be using the store to share UI state between different framer elements. The first one we're going to be building is this counter component. But before we get on to how this works, let's talk about what the store actually is and how we use it in Framer. So like I mentioned in the first video, the store is actually one of the most powerful features of overrides in Framer. And essentially it's a way to share state between different Framer elements. So in this example, we have a pricing component where the user can switch between annual and monthly billing prices. When they click on this toggle, it updates the billing period in the store and our price component listens for those changes and updates itself accordingly. That's one of the cool things about using the store is these changes are reactive. So components that listen to the store will automatically update. There are three components to working with the store in Framer. Step one is creating the store. And that process is really simple. All we need to do is call the create store function. And that takes an object of values. When we set up the store, we're setting the initial values for those items. So you can see here, we set the initial period to be year. But it's important to note that these values can be more than just strings or numbers. They can be arrays or objects or arrays of objects. So we can create quite complicated data structures within the store. Now the store is created outside of the scope of any particular code override, just at the top of the file. And then within a code override, we can read values from the store. On the left here, we have the create store function. And the default value for period is year. And then inside of our override, we read the value from the store using this use store function. And this returns a getter and a setter, sort of like React state does. But in this case, we only need the getter, which is a variable called store. And then to access the value, all we need to do is call store.period and pass that to our text component. And then to get the price, we do the same sort of thing. We call use store, but this time we have some logic to figure out which of the prices we need to fetch. So when the period is set to year, we want to fetch this price. And when the period is set to month, we want to fetch this price. And then we simply pass that price down into our component. Now, updating the store works in much the same way. You'll notice that when we call use store, we return both the store and this set store function, which allows us to update the store. We then have some logic here that figures out what the new value of the store should be. And then on the component itself, we have a click handler that calls the set store function and passes in the new value to the store. Notice how we don't have to pass in any other details of the store. We can select exactly which item needs to be updated without altering any other items in the store. Okay, so let's jump into Framer and build our counter override. All right, so over in Framer, we have a component called counter. And inside here, we have a piece of text and a fake sort of text box and two icons. Now these icons are actually components themselves. So if we click into these, you can see that we have a couple of variants. So we have minus and some hover and click states for that. And then we have plus and some hover and click states for that. But we also have this minus disabled variant, which we'll want to display when the counter gets to zero. So the first thing to do is select our text. Let's click in there and let's give it a code override. Now we want to create a new file. So let's go here and we're going to call it counter. And here we have the example code of rights that Framer gives us. You can see that the store is already set up, which is very useful for us because create store has already been imported for us. So I'm going to delete these two overrides and we have this with random color override, which I'm going to rename to with count. And we can delete all of these attributes and we can also delete this random color import over here and press save. And now we just want to rename this background property to be count. So we're just going to write count there and we're going to give it a default value of zero. Now, before we go apply this override, we should think about the other overrides we need so we can quickly create them and go apply them to the UI. So we need two more overrides. I'm just going to paste these in here. We want one to be called with increment count and one to be called with decrement count and then hit save and we can go back to our counter component and now we can apply these overrides so if we go counter uh, with count and this one we're going to say counter with increment count and the same for this one we're going to say with decrement count now before i carry on i'm just going to preview this and just go straight back. And with that selected, I'm gonna go edit code. And now I'll have the ability to preview that variant from this dropdown. So if I click here, 
now we can preview and work on our code side by side. So the first thing we need to do is actually display the count in this text box. So inside of with count, we already have the code to call the store. And so theoretically, all we need to do is type in text equals store dot count. Now, if I change this to be two, you'll notice that it actually hasn't updated. And the reason for this is count is a number, as we can see here, but text actually needs to receive a string. So to handle this, all we need to do is create a little local variable called count, and we'll store the count in there. And we'll call dot to string on this to make sure that it's a string. And then we'll pass that count variable in here. And you can see as soon as I saved, that updates. So just remember, you always have to pass a string into text. Next up, let's add the logic to increment our count. So we're already calling set store from here. So we have the ability to change the count from this component. So I'm going to pass in a click handler. So on click. And inside of here, we're going to call a function. And that function will call set store like this. And then we need to pass in the new value of count. So we're going to say count. And of course, to do this, we need to know the current value of count. So we're going to say store dot count plus one. Now, in theory, when I click on this, the count will increase. And to decrement the count, it's basically the same thing. So we can just copy this logic and paste it in here. But instead of plus one, we want minus one. So now if I do that, it increments and that decrements. But say we actually don't want the ability for the count to go into a negative. To do that, we need to check what the current value of count is before we call this function. So what we're going to do is make some curly brackets here and another one here. And then we're just going to write an if statement here. So if store.count and we want to say doesn't equal zero. And in that case, return this function. And then over here, we'll say else return. And so it'll just return nothing. So let's test that we can go up and we can go down. But when we get to zero, the count stops. And that's awesome. But we actually want this minus button to not look clickable. And you'll remember that we have a disabled variant set up. So we want to change the variant of this button when the count is zero. So to do that, all we need to do is write variant equals, and then we're going to check the value of the store, we're going to say if store dot count equals zero, then we want the variant to be minus disabled. And if not, we want the variant to be minus. Now I spelt disabled wrong here. So we need to go back and fix that. So now when I click down to zero, the variant changes and there's no longer any feedback when you click it. Now it's important when changing variants using code overrides that you get the name of the variant exactly right. So if I misspelled this, and I get down to zero, you can see that nothing happens. These names are case sensitive. So the exact name you give the variant needs to be here. The other cool thing is that I didn't have to write any while hover or while tapped logic in here because I'm just using the states we set up inside this variant. So we have a hover and a tapped state. And that's great because overrides can interact seamlessly with components created within Framers UI. Okay, so that's it for the counter. Let's move on to build this pricing example I showed you earlier.